So documenting a workshop. So chances are you have done lots of work. That's why you call it a workshop. You have lots of notes. Maybe you have you've have some actions. Maybe there's some strategies in there. Maybe some, some design principles you've agreed on. Whatever it is that the workshop was about, you can quickly capture that into some kind of document. There's only one little problem. Nobody reads those. Really, nothing happens with those. I've sent so many over the last so many years. Nobody reads them. Nobody does anything with it. There is no follow-up, but it doesn't have to be this way. So let's look at a better way to capture some of the output of a meeting of a workshop and then turn it into something that you can take forward and will actually lead to not only actions from the client side, but will get you a step closer to that client as well, assuming you still want to work with them. Well, hello everybody. My name is Yuri. This is the Magic Sauce channel where we talk about facilitation for innovation. Last week, I did a quick video here by this whiteboard. It's actually my wardrobe, by the way, about what to do with all the output. So you have lots of notes, pieces of paper around, scribbles, bits of data and solutions, ideas and actions, flip charts and post-its. What do you do with them? And I said in there, it's basically, it's all about making sure they are disposed of properly and then you work them up into something. And then somebody asked me a great question. How do you document the workshop? I'm still not happy with the PowerPoint with pictures of the outcome plus some nice design elements. And I agree with you, Adam. So let's look at a couple of ways to document the, 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 the workshop or the meeting, whatever it is that the workshop was about. You can quickly capture that into some kind of document, which will look a little bit like this. So the simplest thing you can do is open up some kind of document, which looks like this. You can use PowerPoint. In this case, I'm using Keynote because I don't like Microsoft. You give your presentation a title. Maybe this was the title of the workshop or of the project that you're working on. Maybe there's a subtitle, then write on who put this document together and the date. One of the first things I would do is something really, really simple, which is a bit of a, uh, bit of a, bit of a, what we did. And on this page, you can have your agenda and maybe who attended. Just a quick overview so you know what happened during your workshop, during your meeting. I think there's then another slide with kind of, uh, in more detail so you then take the key chunks or the key activities of that meeting and you work them up a bit more you tell them what we, why we did it what we did how we did it and then maybe some of the findings which then could be another slide which have something like um, uh, what we found maybe this is insights maybe this is kind of the the key designs that you agreed on maybe these maybe this is the maybe this is the the, the, the strategy maybe this is like the, the things that the bigger chunks of things that need to be done and i always have a very simple slide that says something like next steps some kind of action points you probably agreed on something who does what at the end and in the denim you can put maybe all the raw data in there maybe you could put all the extra ideas in there maybe you could put a couple of pictures in there etc etc and you can make it really pretty by adding design and pictures and all that good stuff in that. But at its core, that's basically what it is. Of course, you can put this together in some kind of document. You can even put a lot of time into design. You can even hire a designer to make it look all pretty and the fonts look all nice and little transitions in there and stuff. There's only one little problem. Nobody f***ing reads those. Chances are that document will just end up in a little folder in your computer that says to be read later. And if somebody's even a bit more rude than that, they will hit that magical button we call delete. Nobody ever looks at it. If nobody looks at it, that might mean that a lot of energy is wasted. It also means that you're probably not going to get invited back because nobody's really seen any real results coming from your workshop or from your meeting. So let me give you three simple ideas around output to really increase your chances of success, not only for yourself, but for the client as well. First one, ask, ask questions before you even get started. You already should already be clear about the the outcomes per se, but also ask about output. What is the output that they are looking for? You can always ask them for an example, or if you have a couple, you can bring in a couple of examples. You can say, well, we've done this. It could be a document that looks like this. It could be a little video like that, or it could be just a couple of rendering, some, some drawing, something like this, but give the client something to respond to. So you all are on the same page when it comes to the output that needs to be delivered. And of course, keep track of your hours, because if you need to hire, let's say a visual artist to render a couple of product ideas or packaging ideas, or if you bring in a architect to do a blueprint, all those things will take time and probably money. You can work up a better budget and make sure you don't end up you know, overspending so many hours and so much money. Once you are then clear about what it is that they are looking for in terms of output, then the second one is 
think about some different ways you could then bring that output to life. A document is one, it does not have to be document. Like I said, it could be a video. An old colleague of mine was working with a client on designing a, an innovation center. He helped them with the design of it, like what the concept could be with the name, with the logo and etc. And after a workshop, they came out with three designs, but it could make a decision and he had um, pillow covers made for the, the senior people on this project and with a little note that says why don't you sleep on it for a night or two I will talk to you next week it's a bit creative it's a bit different but once you're clear about what kind of output that they are looking for then this is about thinking creatively about different ways to bring that output to life so the sky is the limit here this is where you get a bit creative but there are different ways to capture that output and then the last one then here is set a time this is about setting a time so you can take the client through the output of that workshop of that meeting which is a great way for you to follow up with them and be a bit more strict with us when they're asking you to just send it by email you say I, I'll have it ready by whatever Tuesday. Tell me when is a good time to give you a call because I want to talk you through it. That's a great way to make sure that actually your output gets seen, you get some feedback from that client, and you can also then discuss the next steps. Great way to get a foot in the door. It's also a great way to make sure the conversation keeps going. Never just send something by email. Don't just send, they will just, you know, to be read later. Delete.